There is just something about taking an Ikea piece of furniture and giving it a new function or a new look. And that is exactly what we're going to do today with the Tarva dresser. I'm Allie and welcome back to my channel. It has admittedly been a while because I have been procrastinating this project, but I know it's going to be a fun one. We are going to be doing another Ikea hack. Now, as I have said that I am in my craft room, we're trying to finish this up so we can begin other projects throughout the apartment. And I want to do the other side of the wall behind you here and making it super functional. So what we're doing today is taking the Ikea Tarva dresser. And I want to reimagine it as like an old fashioned style, apothecary style looking dresser. And I thought that would just be like a fun way to organize some of my craft supplies, tools and things like that, and kind of tie in that antique look that we're trying to bring into the space, but doing it more of a DIY fashion. So the very first thing, of course, we have to do is get that dresser built. And I am a little bit nervous because I've heard that it's a bit of a challenging build, but I have been building a lot of furniture in this apartment. So hopefully I have all the skills and I'm ready to take this one on. Okay, so we got the Tarva dresser all assembled. I stopped though once I got to the part with the drawers because the drawers are going to be what really makes this into that apothecary look. And the reason I went with the Tarva dresser for this project is because it really is a blank canvas with the unfinished wood. I can pretty much do whatever I want with it. And since I plan to stain it, it is nice to have that wood grain. However, I was a little bit astounded by how expensive the Tarva dresser has gotten because I always found like this was like that DIY friendly furniture piece from Ikea. So if you can find something like on Facebook Marketplace or thrift it and just any dresser will pretty much work for this project as long as it has a nice flat drawer front. But what I want to do though on this one is they put the holes already for the knobs here on the drawer fronts but I'm going to be replacing those with something that looks a little bit different. So I just need a little bit of some wood filler and we're just going to fill all these in and let that dry before we move on to our next step. While the wood filler is drying on each of our drawer fronts, I figured this is a good time to multitask and start cutting the faces of the drawer front. So I picked up at the craft store some pieces of boss wood, and these are specifically six, the 1 16th inch and they're a four by 36 piece. Now, the reason I'm going this route is because I did not want to use a router. <laughs> and so that's because I don't have one and I wanted to make this kind of like tutorial very friendly for anybody who doesn't even have power tools because the only power tool you'll maybe need for this project is a drill. Not like the cheapest way of doing it. Make sure you have a coupon if you're buying these pieces from the craft store, but it is going to achieve the effect that we are going for. What I want to do is show you what kind of my inspiration or my idea. So that's up on the screen right here. You can see that I wanna create this illusion of multiple different drawer fronts. So on the top, I want a lot of drawer fronts and then maybe a couple less in the middle row. Then just leaving the bottom ones kind of the full drawer front just as they normally are because I like the idea of it going from more down to less and you're never gonna really see the bottom when I'm using it in my craft room for my video. So figured I'd just make it a little bit easier. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do is take our drawer front, we're gonna measure it, and then just cut down these pieces to the length, and that's gonna create our middle pieces. I'm just gonna start there first because that is the easiest place to start. I cut my four pieces of boss wood and they look perfect. I would say that, you know, I'm not too concerned about the edges being an exact lineup match because we're gonna have to give this whole thing a good sand anyway after they're attached and before we do the staining. So 
What I'm gonna do now is take these here and when you see, obviously there's a nice big gap in the in between. So I need to measure right here and then cut these pieces so that there's a little bit of an opening so it looks nice and even in that illusion of four different drawers on top of here. So it is just about three quarters of an inch. So I'm just gonna roll with three quarters of an inch to make it super easy. <laughs> So the last measurement we used was 29 and a quarter. So because we're going to account for that three quarter inch gap, we're gonna to wanna to cut the length down of these to 28 and a half. That will remove that extra third of an inch. And then what we'll do is after that length is cut off, we will then just cut them in half down the middle and that will form our four quadrants. So I sanded down all of the wood filler. It turned out really nice. And now we're just going to attach our little basswood pieces that are all cut down right to size on to our drawer front. So we're going to wanna line these up, like I said, with the bevel edge that is on the drawer fronts already. There's like a nice little bevel all the way around. And that will be a perfect guide. So we don't even have to worry about measuring and positioning. I'm just gonna follow that and if it's not perfect, it's gonna just add to the character of the piece anyway, so I'm not super worried. We're just using some basic wood glue and some painter's tape to adhere everything in place until it dries, which will take about 20 or 30 minutes. So we're letting those drawer fronts dry just a little bit longer with that wood glue so that they're really ready to go. And so while that's happening, because there's only a couple minutes left, I thought we could get to staining the dresser. So for this, I actually want to use, instead of a traditional stain, a gel stain. And the reason behind this is that a gel stain goes on a little bit thicker. It's also easier for a vertical surface like the sides of it in front of a dresser. And because the Ikea Tarva dresser and just kind of all their natural pine line furniture doesn't have the nicest wood grain. So this will actually kind of conceal some of it and we'll be able to have a little bit of control over how the final result looks. And the color I chose is aged oak because I do want to go for that antique look look. So what we're going to do is apply this. I think it's going to take two coats. We're going to put the first one on. You let it set up on whatever you're staining for at least three minutes. Then you want to go over top of that with a lint-free cloth to remove the excess stain. When you apply it, you put it on very thick and then you wipe off the excess and then it takes, this takes a really long time to dry. You're going to want to wait at least eight hours before a second coat of stain.
So I totally filmed an on-camera bit for this part, but the audio just did not turn out. So I am really happy with how this dresser turned out with the finish, with the poly. It just looks so good. So now let's talk about hardware. And I picked out these gorgeous pieces of hardware for this project. So I got these little cup poles and they're gonna go paired with these little label drawer things. This is like the signature look for an apothecary cabinet. And then for these smaller drawer fronts, I found one that's kind of like a combo of both and it's really going to tie everything together. All I had to do was measure out each drawer front and where I wanted to place the handles and label holders and attach them with my drill. Now that the hardware is on, it is time to show you what this dresser looks like. Now, I said that it's gonna be for my craft room, but for the sake of this reveal, let me show you it in a space where you would typically put a dresser in the bedroom. So here is the final result in three, two, one. I am so happy with how this dresser turned out from my little sketch in a notebook into actuality. It looks exactly how I pictured it and I couldn't be any happier with the final result. Now I do have some more ideas to really elevate this quite literally for my craft room. And I'm gonna show you that in an upcoming video where we're finally going to finish that side of the room of the craft room. That was a lot of rooms in one sentence. And then we're going to put all the organization in and you're gonna get the full DIY studio reveal. So if you don't wanna miss that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And while you're doing that, don't forget to hit the like button on this video because it truly is the best way to help this video reach more people and to help my channel grow. Well, thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll catch you on my next one. Bye.